What is going on? What is going on, everybody on YouTube? Um, not that you guys can hear me this time. It's just, I was I was talking to the people on Instagram. You guys can't see this part, but I'm over there too, <laughs> and I'm over here. So I set the cameras that way everybody can kind of see me. How was you guys' um, weekend? How was Thanksgiving for you guys? Um, for me, it was really good. Just relaxed, you know. Not too much, not too much. Hung out with the family. Ate some turkey. But um, took some time off. It's been about two, almost two weeks since I went live. Yeah, I think it's about two weeks. So I had promised everybody um, the part five, like I was saying, over here on YouTube. So I'm going to do that tonight. I'm not going to go. I'm going to go live off from here. I'm going to read the news for both. And then I'm going to get off of here and I'm going to go over here. <laughs> Anyway, guys, sorry. I need to get a new chair, and I've been saying this for some time. I'm not getting heavier. I actually watched what I was eating this week because uh, I was eating a lot the last week and a half because my cheat week was coming around, right? So when my cheat week was coming around, um, I decided to start cheating about four days early. And then, uh, you know, I indulge a little bit. But I'm back on the diet again. I'm 120, I mean 172 still. Um, I'm working out again. I've been doing the boxing thing for some time already. It's fun. It's fun, you know. I can punch. I can punch now. Anyway, so let me sit down so I can. I don't make so much noise, guys. This I gotta get a new chair, or I gotta. I oiled this one already once, but um, I'm gonna have to do it again. So anyway, can you guys hear that? Dang, it's getting on my nerves because I'm not even moving that much. Anyway, a lot of things happening around the world. A lot of things are going on, and I've been talk I've been touching uh, recently about the whole thing that's going on with the uh, with the railroad strikes that are coming along. Now Biden just spoke tonight, and he said that um, that he was going to step in. Guys on YouTube, subscribe. You guys can't hear what I'm doing, but I'm touching stuff right here. Subscribe, everybody are here. If you guys want to come to my channel on Instagram, go subscribe too, and then uh, you guys can watch these lives on there. Um, because I'm, you guys won't be able to see the whole program tonight. And uh, thanks thanks to everybody who subscribed lately. Uh, I got gained a few more subscribers on YouTube. Thank you guys. And then uh, we're trying to do bigger things here. This is just the beginning. It's a lot more that I want to teach. Um, also, I can teach on both. But like I said, the interface is not for Instagram yet. I don't know if they're ever going to do that to merge them together. They might. Anyway, a lot's going on tonight, guys, uh, around the world. The 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 war in Ukraine, um, it's intensifying big time. Now, I know of someone who's in Ukraine right now. I'm not going to say their names, you know, for their privacy. Uh, but I got no news today that they're, they're about to go into a major attack either today. I haven't looked at the news before I got on, but... Um, today tomorrow thursday uh the ground is freezing already in, in in most parts of ukraine right now because of the weather they say it might go as low as five in the next by the weekend and it looks like uh they're saying that there's fifty thousand um troops in belarus already that are ready to make the way down over to either both split it between lviv and kiev this is not good guys um about 80% of Ukraine is, uh, is is basically in the dark right now. They don't have water. They don't have electricity. And this is a humanitarian crisis that we're witnessing that's happening over there. Again, this is... I'm not... I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I hope... I don't know if there's any Russian people who are going to watch this. Um, I'm not... I don't like... Bi um, not Biden. I was going to say Putin. I don't like... I don't like him. Um, obviously this is an invasion An invasion means that they're That the other group did not want them In their country So, And that happens to be the group that invaded was Russia So I'm not Necessarily against the Ru I'm not against the Russian people I'm not going to speak negative about the Russian people I've met a lot of Russian people in my time And they're, they're good people From what I've met in America the Ukrainian people are beautiful people as well So, But uh, there's a major conflict here And it's all political It's for corp corporate greed We know this um, If you haven't looked into the whole situation uh, You should look a little deeper And the mainstream media is not going to help you out I looked into a lot of different things guys And um, there's arguments from both sides But at the end of the day Ukraine is the one who's The Ukrainian people are suffering right now 
right? And here in America, we're we're just watching, and it's 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 sad for me, right? But from what I understand, from what people are telling me right now, is that there's a major offensive that most likely uh, Russia is going to start, and this is not good. It's not good. War is not good. But like I said, all of this has to do with corporate greed, both from at least from the Russian and the American side. What I understand, right? So that's what I'm going to say. But um, guys, um, one of the things, uh, the news that I want to read on you guys, I already, I already put a video today on Instagram, and uh, let me see. I might show it to the audience over here. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see if I can pull it up over here. Now, um, you guys won't be able to see it. You guys can go watch it on on my Instagram. Um, I think it's the real I put on Instagram, but I'm gonna show it to the audience over here. So they can see what I sh uh, I'm looking at the stores, right? And basically, the anti the anti shelves are getting bigger. There's this is evidence that we can't really hide necessarily anymore, and um, it's something that's not good, you know. Especially more more. if you have children, and medicines are missing. And this is, I I want to say that is possibly because of maybe because of um of um. The situation that's going on uh, with uh, with the railroad strikes that are about to happen, and also the the whole infrastructure of our backbone, which is you know transportation of goods, you know through diesel and through you know um, the trucking industry. That right now, uh, there are, there are, a lot of them are going out of business, right? A lot of them are leaving the industry because. Um, they want to pay them a dollar thirty per mile, or instead of the three fifty four dollars they want. So you have to understand something that this is going to intensify. If we're seeing this, if you guys want to go watch this video, I already posted it on Instagram. I just showed it on on, on YouTube. But I want to give you guys the news. I'm already how long? I'm already about eleven minutes in here. So I want to keep it within twenty minutes. So I'm going to read an article for you guys, and I'm gonna let me see. I'm gonna change it over here too so they can read over here with me so it says no path forward so what is this about it's about the the railroad strike that's about to happen and on december 5th i believe is the day that they're about to do this and if congress doesn't step in what they want uh the this union workers what they actually want is that they want to get paid vacation um uh for sick days two weeks at least and they're not they're the unions are basically saying we're not going to give you this either take the deal or don't take it but they're going to go on strike if this happens guys this is not going to be good for america believe me it's not going to be good we're already looking at the shortages and oh i had another i have another video on my post maybe tomorrow or the day after i went to pelco today right since i have turtles i buy i buy them stuff <laughs> so uh, when I walked into Petco today, I looked, there's a lot of empty shelves. So I spoke to the guy and I was like, hey, what's going on with all these empty shelves? He's like, two problems. He says logistical issues with the merchandise, which is, guys, I'm talking about, I went to Vons in the morning and I went to Petco and both places are having uh, inventory issues. This is not good. Uh, Subscribe now. So, sorry guys, I'm over here having fun with the other one today. <laughs> I'm pushing buttons over there still. Um, so... If, if Petco and Vons are both going through this, guys, the restaurants, the you guys, you guys been to the restaurants lately? It's it's just you're paying 25, 30% almost on, on every single restaurant. So the reason why I'm saying this stuff is because you guys need to prepare because I've been talking about this for a year and we're here seeing it now. We weren't seeing well, this, not a lot of these empty shelves back when I started talking about it in July, August of last year, right? But we're seeing it now. Anyway, so it says, no path forward. Biden calls on Congress to avert rail strike. Let me, let me lower it down right here. Okay, let me see. Um, many rank uh, many rank and file railroad workers have fought to have better sick leave uh, policies than this enriched in, in, in the agreement. And Biden's action represents a significant split with parts of his labor base. Okay, let me let me lower it down a little bit right here. So, President Bi President Joe Biden on Monday asked Congress to intervene to prevent an econ uh, ec economically crippling freight rail strike, even though it means delivering a def uh, defeat to his allies in the labor uh, movement. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi immediately announced she will call a vote. Uh, she will call 
she will call a vote this week to carry out Biden's request, which means that paid sick leave for 115,000, uh, uh, can't read tonight, uh, workers involved in negotiation won't be included in the deal. Biden had held off for months on seeking congressional action instead of going to give, uh, instead opting to give the freight rail industry. Let me see. I'm trying to make it change a little bit. Uh, freight rail industry and 12 of its union uh, more time to negotiate a contract. Okay, so that's one part of what's going on in, in this rail strike. It looks like it's going to happen most likely. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to avoid it. But think about this, guys. Even if it's a week, a few weeks, or a month, this is going to slow down uh, the movement of, of merchandise through America. It's just bound to happen if this goes down. Christmas is not is looking worse. Now, imagine that... I, I, obviously, it's a union. So, yes, the government, through unions, they step in and they do what needs to be done. But at the end of the day, this is the problem with what's going on with government reach that they have the ability to step in well people who want to be in unions this is what happens right so i'm not against and i'm not blaming you know biden or the administration for this it's just something that happens when people um um you know get together and they begin to start movements where um you know where they want to get better pay. And I'm not going to say that it is incorrect for unions, right? But I mean, this is what happens in capitalism, if you will. This is what capitalism is. But at the end of the day, it's going to affect you and I at the store. It's going to affect us. If this, even a week or two weeks, is going to slow down everything, right? And we're going to pay for it. You and I are going to pay for this, right? Um, so get ready to pay more at the, more at the pump. Get, pay, get ready to get paid more at the grocery stores and at the restaurants because of this. Now, guys, the next article I'm going to look at right now is um, there was actually um, the the Mauna Lao volcano in Hawaii erupted for the first time in nearly 40 years. This is crazy. I saw this. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this today on the news. No evacuations order were issued, but officials advised residents to review their preparedness plans. The volcano last erupted in 1984. Manua Lao, I think that's how you say this. I don't know how to say that. Located in the big island of Hawaii, erupted for the first time in 38 years late Sunday night, following a series of striking eruptions in recent years of the smaller and nearby Kilau, Kilaua. I don't know how to say that. Uh, Kilaua, Kilaua, I'll say Kilaua volcano. I have been waiting for Manua Lao, Earth's largest active volcano i don't know that was the largest one to erupt since i first learned of it in college said kenneth robin a volcan a volcan volcanologist at the university of hawaii at Man manau i think that's how you say that and despite 30 plus years of living in hawaii and witnessing many spectacular things from kelawa i am a i am watching this eruption closely and hoping for no substantial impact on hawaiian's community I don't know if you guys heard about this. I think I posted a I posted a short on YouTube. There was a, a five what was it a five point six earthquake in 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 uh, Mexico last week, right? And if you guys look at what's going on um, around the world, is like all this stuff is intensifying. Is this is that is that, and it's just all merging together. So the end of the uh, the name of the channel is called what um, end time. Uh, uh, the end times, right? End of times, I mean, end of times. i got to correct myself on that one. Uh, but um, it's crazy to think that all this stuff is happening right in front of our eyes. So uh, I wanted to read you guys the news, right? And the news is going to be something different, obviously, every day. Uh, now, one of the things that you got to look at is that the world is changing quickly and we got to adapt to it, you know? And I've been letting people know on Instagram mostly that they need to start um, I don't know who's doing what they're doing or what they're not doing. Uh, give me a second, guys. Give me a second, okay? Give me a second, guys. So, what's going on with... Uh, give me a second, guys. i got to put a pause here. i got to check something.
All right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I have to check something real quick. When you do lives, guys, there's always going to be some kind of situation. So let me um, let me get back in here for a second. So what I was saying about this whole situation is that um, that everything that's going on is that around the world is just intensifying, and like I was saying about this volcano, guys, we have situations in Mexico. I don't know if you guys know that there was a 7.6 earthquake in Afghanistan about four months ago that killed about 1,200 people. So one of the things that we got to take a look at and be careful is that um, everything's uh, down, uh, today down the street from my house, there was actually a, a police chase and they ended up right, at the, at the, right by the park. I was working and I looked at one of the forums on Facebook and um, when I saw the, the, the news report, I was like, okay, let me, uh, let me go check. And it was down the street from my house, so I think I must have started carrying my, you know, my my heat <laughs> again because it's not looking good. But guys, more layoffs are happening also um, around the country now. As we know that one of the things, uh, Alphabet, I don't even know what this is. It's laying off ten thousand people. More news, right, about the layoffs. Uh, who else? Uh, next. Nexel Menu, I think is the name, is laying off 30% of its employees. Hewlett Packard is going to lay off uh, 6,000 of its employees. So the numbers are coming out. Uh, Cisco is laying off 4,000 employees. This is November. This is just the, the month of November. Oh, Carvana. You know, guys, Carvana is about to go bankrupt, right? I don't know if you guys know that. They are laying off um, uh, 1,500 employees. A uh, Foxconn, Foxconn, I was going through a, a hiring freeze. Uh, let me see who else. Uh, G, uh, GE Appliances uh, are laying off five percent of their employees. This is just November, but they're announcing that's coming pretty soon. We already know about Amazon is ten thousand. Twitter laid off about four forty four hundred of their employees, uh, and um, Go To Group. I don't even. I never heard of that before. It's laying off a thousand. C.H. Robinson, uh, C.H. Robinson, this is a logistic, you know, you guys know what a logistic company is for, right? It's just, um, let me see, it says truck, oh yeah, truck actually, yeah, truck brokerage company, C.H. Robinson. We were talking about the, uh, the, the, the infrastructure of the movements of America, right? And this is trucking and the railroad industry is how we move everything in America. And look at what it says. Uh, they're laying off a thousand employees. Obviously, when it said logistics, I, I knew already knew. I didn't see this one earlier when I looked at it. Whisper, I have no idea what that is. Uh, technology, I guess. I never heard of it. Thousand employees. Sema or Sema Four laying off five hundred employees. I don't know what that name is. <laughs> or offer up is uh, laying off nineteen percent of their employees. Uh, on back backup, I don't know what that is. Technology, I guess it must be in the tech. Seventeen percent of employees. Meta is uh, laying off uh, eleven um, oh eleven thousand employees, and Mythical Games ten percent of employees, and there's just a whole bunch. And this is just what's being announced in November. Um, Dix, uh, the geeks, the Dixie Group. I don't know. It's at that is meant to be say group. Twenty percent of employees. Twitter. I did not know this. Twitter is laying off um, thirty seven hundred. And as we know, the rest of them, right? So I don't like to say the idea of I told you so or whatever you want to think of that, you know. I don't want to claim those things, but uh, it's looking pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. Because, I mean, when you have so many companies that are announcing that they're about to... A lot of these companies hire over hired people because of the of the 2020 uh, situation, right? We know that already. And uh, but imagine a lot of these people that were hired and they were making between 65 and let's say 185 thousand dollars. A lot of these people went out and bought houses recently, and this is something we've been talking about. I've been talking about, and now that many other channels are talking about right now. Uh, let me go in here and show this to this to the people over here, so they can see what I just showed you guys. Uh, so they're basically. Um, doing this and you know it's moving fast and quickly we're gonna see a different type of Christmas a different type of December and after this December guys like I was telling people last week that is gonna be a whole different type of uh, environment uh, we can see the psychology the psychosis in society today so 
we gotta we gotta start paying attention more and more and making the changes that we need to be done right so anyway this is the news for now i'm gonna put together more stuff for you guys in the future i'm gonna try to go live like i said on uh on instagram and give you guys because i have to be able um, once i get off of here the next thing that i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go up in here and talk to the audience over here on uh, on, um, on youtube and we're gonna go into the transhumanism which is an industry guys that is crazy um may, the main thing we're gonna talk about on, on youtube it has to do with the over um this the the number of single people in places like japan china uh also india and where they're exporting uh importing i mean not export importing uh brides into those countries and because there's a uh, there's too many men and not enough women but i'm gonna go into that topic over here so um and then if you guys are gonna go watch it uh, send me a direct um uh, Send me a direct on, on Instagram and I'll send you the link so you guys can take a look at it. This is going to be fun. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things and I'm going to show people. Um, I have about, I think, like 18 videos on, on YouTube already. But um, this is going to be a good one. You guys should look into it. This is all current news and stuff like that. But um, it, should, uh, it should be something different for people to look at and ponder, wonder, question and look at. Um, but I'm going to go over the window of overtone. I don't know if you guys heard of that window of overtone. Okay. Okay. I'll send you the link in a little bit so you can look at it. Uh, I just read your message right now. I'll send it to you in a second. Once I'm off the live, I'm going to send it to your, to your inbox. It's going to take a minute though, because I got to put them on. So what I'm going to do right now, people on YouTube is that I'm going to, um, play a video for you guys and I'm going to deal with Instagram right here. And then I'm going to get off of here and then I'm going to go back to you guys. But I'm going to play a video for you, for you guys to start off with. And it has to do with the window of overtone. And then um, and I might explain to you guys what it means uh, and what's behind it and everything. So I'm about to um, get off of Instagram. But I might also link people over here too as well. Give me one second, guys. And then uh, I'll show you guys in a second. All right. So... When the press acts in the interests of the press, they are acting as a class, and they have found if they all act in concert with a cascade of articles all on the same subject, all with the same data points, and all pushing the same message, they can control society like some kind of social aristocracy. And it's men like Trump and PewDiePie and anyone else who has the balls to stand up to them and fight back who are now deemed the evil tyrannical populists even when all they are actually doing is dislodging these people from their illegitimately gained positions of power i can even show you how the media achieved this power i need to introduce you to a concept called the overton window the overton window is a term coined by joseph p overton the former vice president of the McKinnock Center for Public Policy. The Overton window is the range of ideas that the public will accept in public discourse. These are the ideas that it is acceptable and politically correct for politicians and the media to say. And these are the ideas that they will allow to be said on their platform. I'll be speaking in general terms here, but it's rather hard to describe this concept without them. Here is a rough diagram of various different types of groups in society arrayed around the mainstream media, so I can demonstrate the mainstream media's relationship to them. This circle is the media's Overton window. This is the range of ideas that the media will find it acceptable to discuss. In a normal, healthy society, it should have some overlap with all of these groups, so members from these groups can be given a platform and given the opportunity to influence this society to explain and air their grievances so politicians and other people can hear them and if other people in these groups are having the same problems action can be taken to try and alleviate it to prevent one group suffering unduly at the expense of others this is the overton window that our media is operating with one that entertains a very limited range of ideas and ones specifically beneficial to the sensibilities of the mainstream media, who are usually overwhelmingly progressive. People outside of this bubble do not get heard. If the people outside of this bubble have a problem and they are not heard, no one can fix the problem. No one will even know that there is a problem. 
until it comes the time to vote. The reason the media's Overton window has shrunk to such a phenomenally narrow degree is because every time members of the groups on the outside of this bubble want an issue raised, the media simply ignores them and dismisses them with a label. You are a racist, you're a sexist, you're an Islamophobe, you are whatever. It doesn't matter what the method of dismissing them is, the point is that they are dismissed. This has gone on to the point where now there are more people on the outside of this bubble than on the inside. And they have raised up for themselves champions in the forms of Donald Trump and PewDiePie to solve their... Now, check out one thing about this whole overtone window, right? Something that most people don't know, or maybe they have heard about it. I heard about this some, uh, some time ago. And um, the overtone window is basically what the media does in order for them to um, push a narrative and they how, to, how they control the, the, the thinking process of the, of the population and um, of the people, right? So there's something that has been... There's something that has been going on. From what I understand about this, this started being studied back in the 1920s and 30s in the First World War when they started uh, uh, experimenting with LSD, which is they did experiments within the army to actually see exactly how they use LSD and other drugs to basically mess with the human psyche. So this is just the later years of, of this particular thing. The Overton window came around, I believe in the 1960s when it came out and became more mainstream and it was talked about uh, uh, you know, in the universities. So one of the things about this, uh, this, this Overton window is that um, they, um, they want to um, control the media, right? And they want to control the ideas and the, and the masses and the populace and everything that people are, are, are doing, right? So uh, one of the ways that they were able to do the 2020 situation is that the media themselves, they control the idea and they control the narrative. And if you speak against it, they will, this guy will talk about it more right here, but I, I want to like show you guys this, this, uh, this video a little bit more their problems and that's what these people are doing donald trump is the president and he must remain the president to solve the problems that these people are having because these people find these problems intolerable because they are being oppressed this so about donald trump is another thing guys i'm i've said this before in multiple lives before in, in different places i'm not a big fan of the man right but um i do there's been good things that he's done um and they're you know better than most of the other guys that everybody else you know votes for i don't vote i'll be honest with you so my uh, opinion is more val valid because i don't take a stance and i don't take a side uh of what um i don't take a side of politics so I can tell you that I'm going to give you an unbiased uh, opinion. I don't like him, but he's done better things. But he stood up to the media, guys. Who was the last person that stood up to media uh, in the last 70 years? Uh, actually, J.F. Kennedy did some. But look at how he ended up, right? But uh, if you keep looking at about, about this uh, overtone window, is how they input ideas into the populace since they're little kids. This starts... In elementary that's the reason why in the early 1900s if you guys don't know about this that they grabbed the education system because they knew 120 years ago actually more like 140 years ago that the population was actually increasing faster and faster and they need to control the people so the overtone window is one of the ways they've been able to do it, and they use media if you guys look at the media that happened in the 1930s and 40s right most around the second world war when um the idea of feminism came around at that time is that they actually um, used the media and they post plaster all over America, you know, uh, the, the strong independent woman narrative, right? And that's how they managed to do it. This that didn't start in the 80s, 90s, no, this goes way back almost 100 years. But let's keep, let's keep um, listening to what he's saying. This must happen for the health of the society and the people causing this are the gatekeepers in the mainstream media. And this is the reason that the mainstream media is so unpopular. They have the power to ruin lives and they use it, which is what both Donald Trump and PewDiePie have said 
about their experiences with the media, and again, I quote them both. This would be my life ruined if I did not have this platform from which to reply. In an indirect way, the mainstream media has been oppressing the people it's been leaving out of its narratives. It must be stopped. It must be prevented from acting like its own aristocratic class. They have to be prevented from doing this because they are damaging our societies. When Donald Trump says that the media are the enemy of the people, he's right. They are elitists. They are anti- Listen to what I'm about to say about this. So today I was, I think I was on, ah, uh, you know what? I have it on, on Instagram. I saw this, 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 I can't, I didn't pull it. That's the last, the only thing I forgot to pull. Guys, I was le getting ready for this for an hour and a half. I was putting every little detail together, right? But there's a video that I saw. I'm going to use this one next time. And there's a video about a new show that's coming out on Disney. And in the video, they're showing that they're putting Matter of fact, I might even be able to have it over here. Let me show you guys if you guys can see this. I'm about to use the bigger camera for this. I have to show you guys this because um, I recorded it actually. And uh, let me see if I can show you guys right here. So if you look at what's going on with, um, uh, I don't know if I, I don't know where it would be actually. Let me see. I thought I put it over here. I recorded a few videos today too. Let me see. Maybe I didn't record it. You know what? I shared it on my Instagram. Go, uh, I'll pull it up later. I'll sh um, but they're showing that they're showing the kids doing a, a Disney little. You know how the this the 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 Disney Channel does different shows, right? So the, in this one it says, "I love Satan." That's what it says. Just so you guys know, and I'm gonna go into this in, uh, with transhumanism a little later. Ver, um, the creator of NASA, right? One of the founders of NASA. I cannot remember his name right now. Um, let me look it up, though. One of the creators of NASA was best friends with Walt Disney. You guys know who Walt Disney is, obviously, right? So, hold on. Let me see. Um... I'll, I'll look it up another time, guys. I didn't get that didn't get that ready, but his name is Von Ross, I believe. Uh, his last name. He's, uh, he's he's one of the main founders of NASA. Him and Walt Disney were like best buddies, right? So we already know about the conditioning that's been happening, even with Disney. Now, guys, I go to Disneyland. I've watched the movies. I'm a big fan of, you know, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, one of my favorite movies, too. Uh, we got Aladdin, another one of my favorite ones, right? I, I like the movies. Now, I'm not going to sit here and, and, as a Christian, I'm not going to sit here and claim that it's a sin to watch this and you're going to go to hell for it. Nah, that's not how this works. What I'm saying is that uh, when you watch this stuff as a child, um, you're exposing yourself to certain things. Now, the movies from the 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, I don't think they're that bad. But when you start looking at, I don't know if you guys looked at The Little Mermaid, on the, on the original uh, poster for The Little Mermaid, if you look really close and you zoom in, on the castle itself, there's an actual penis right there. It looks clearly like that. Now, I don't know, maybe it was a mistake. I don't know, right? But either way, but if you look at what they're doing with this window of overtone, what I'm showing right here is that they've been using the media, right? If you look at stuff like, um, um, like the like the Simpsons, for example, right? If you look at the Simpsons, they they portray the man as a goofball, as a as a ape. They portray him as this as this this dodo. You see what I'm saying? They've been doing this for a long time, and that's how they use the window of overtone, like this guy is explaining right here through the media, right? I'm not a big fan of the media, guys. It's been a while since I actually saw. I stopped watching the mainstream media in like 2020, 2012. I mean, I just can't stand it. I watch it here and there, you know. So I, I just, I just pick them apart too easily. But let me continue this. Now, this window of overtone. The reason why I'm bringing this up through transhumanism is because they're using. It's like a, it's like a, a psychological. Um, have you guys heard of, of, of uh, Ultra um, MK? Have you guys heard? Ultra MK. Well, Ultra MK is what is is actually the initial uh, research they did in, in the in the Second World War. Ultra MK. I don't know if you guys know what it is. Is when they use LSD, and that's when they do what I was explaining earlier. So they use that to manipulate the people, and they're still doing this experiment, guys. Right. So why is this, this is important? Because not only has your worldview, your perception, your paradigm 
the consensus in society has been manipulated by the media. And this is a machine, right? And then transhumanism has to do with all of this. And it all merges together. I'll show you guys a little bit more. I'm, I'm talking about this and I'm putting this video up because I'm going to show you guys what's going on in a little bit. It's, it's, you guys gonna, it's gonna be crazy what I'm about to show you guys, but I'll, I'll keep playing this. The populists, they are anti the people who they are oppressing. And they are like that to keep them under their thumb. This form of social tyranny must come to an end. I also want to speak to you without the filter of the fake news. The dishonest media, which has published one false story after another, with no sources, even though they pretend they have them, they make them up in many cases. They just don't want to report the truth, and they've been calling us wrong now for two years. They don't get it, but they're starting to get it. I can tell you that. Well, there's an ex one of the examples. Now, now we're going to go into the part where transhumanism comes into play. The Overton window is a right? model of policy on, change. Let me turn this the on. Overton window. So, uh, I don't know if you guys heard what he just said about policy change. This is the politics of it, but we're going to go actually into the other part of it. Now, one of the things that I don't know if you guys know this, that China, Japan, and even um, India, East India, they have a whole... Um, and I'm going to tell you guys how this is merging together with transhumanism and what's happening over here. I'm going to play this for you guys. This is kind of more fun, but uh, just look at what this is, guys. Try not to laugh because there's more of this, but I'm going to show you guys this stuff. It's, it's, it's This is actually from 2017. This is more advanced today, but this they have actual girlfriends that are virtual girlfriends. Say hello to Azuma Hikari the world's first virtual anime robot. <laughs> that not only can automate your smart home, but acts as a virtual girlfriend who reacts to your presence when you're in the room and sends you pleasing text messages while you're away. Gatebox has an array of embedded sensors such as a camera, microphone, motion sensor, light sensor, warmth and moisture sensors. Instead of a simple cylindrical speaker design, Gatebox has a screen and a projector, which brings her curry to life inside the gadget. Using the sensors, she can interact with you on a more personal level, rather than just being a voice on your phone. The result is a fully interactive virtual Can you guys imagine that? Now, there's, there's so many dynamics to this particular video and this particular issue. As you guys know, I think it started in the 1940s, 30s, 40s, no, I mean 2030s and 40s, China, Japan, and India, East India, right, which are all Eastern countries. And this is a very heavy subject, what I'm about to talk about, but I'm about to say they aborted, I believe it's somewhere around the 80 or 90 million babies within that time. Right, because uh, they they have the overpopulation of the world is in China, India. Does those people those those two country carries the big the I think is um there's eight billion people on Earth. They carry about about forty percent of the Earth population in China and in India. Now, what they have done right here in uh this is from Japan. So as you guys know that Japan, China, and India are some of the one of the some of the biggest hyper uh hyperly driven countries for excellence and achievement right that's just the culture but what they did here is that the government tried to control the population and they did to a certain degree but now they have an overpopulation of males in both china and um i mean in china and japan so now they're using technology and it's big over there because i believe that there's about i think it's in in japan there's, I think, like uh, somewhere around 20, somewhere around, I mean, not 17 million single, um, you know, 
males over there. They can't get women in China either. So they're exporting these women in. So transhumanism has to do with this, that now. And I'm going to show you the next video. The next one's going to be even crazier than this one. But can you imagine that we go living in a world where men are no longer uh, able to communicate because these guys, you see, yes, you guys see these right here, right? <laughs> the, let me show you guys that. I have, I have four of these. That's what I'm able to do. See? These, right? It's a little dirty. My bad. I don't know where my towel is. <laughs> but um, this stuff right here makes us... Uh, Elon Musk already said, um, obviously, right? He said that um, that we are bionic in a sense. Everything that we possibly... Most information is through here. We use Google and all types of other sources to be able to learn stuff. Guys, all of this that I'm doing right here, you see this? I researched it within a month and I learned all of this like, I mean, I pick it up fast, you know, I'm good with technology, but it's helping us out. But in reality, but look at what's happening with these guys right here. And America is not falling behind from this, but we are getting close to where they're at. But I'll show you more of this. Girl, who at the most basic can control your smart home equipment. The sensors mean she can recognize your face and your voice and is designed to be a companion who can wake you up in the morning, fill you in on your day's activities, remind you of things to remember and even welcome you back when you return home from work. Not to mention she also sends pleasing text messages throughout the day such as have fun at work. The gate box was designed for otaku which is Japanese for a young man who is obsessed with computers or a particular aspect of pop culture such as comic books and anime to the detriment of their own social skills. In other words, young men who prefer to play games, watch anime, and read comics, rather than go out socializing at nightclubs. Well, that's me in a nutshell anyway. Azuma Hakari is a young anime-looking girl in a short white dress with long legs and blue hair, and she even has her own website. She's also classed as the first character with a distinct personality, two voices, hobbies, likes and dislikes, and even a dream. Interaction is done through voice chat in person, with a camera mounted at the top of the tube, ensuring Azuma is always able to look at the person she's conversing with. When away from home, an iOS or Android gatebox app can be used to continue chatting with Azuma, or to get her to do things in time for your return, such as turn on the lights and central heating on a cold day. It's easy to view this as creepy, especially when Azuma holds up a sign on her website that says Master Now Wanted. However, an increasing number of people live alone, and if the gate box offers some companionship... Master, did she... <laughs> Damn, I think I gotta go get me one of these. I, and I don't think they're cheap either. I don't think these things are cheap. But I mean, as you guys know, uh, Japan, right? They, they lead, they've been leading the world. Japan... India and Israel are leading the world when it comes to technology, certain technologies, and so is Russia. Uh, America, we fall in, we're falling a little bit behind, but there's other stuff that there. But let me keep playing this, and uh, this is to me, it's funny that you have to have a relationship with this with this AI technology nowadays because it's just the world is changing fast, right? But I mean, this is a part of the end times. Ship and help around the home. It can prove both useful and a valuable point of interaction for people who are otherwise secluded. A 2016 study by the National Institute of Population and Social Security Research in Japan found that almost 70% of unmarried men and 60% of unmarried women are not in a relationship. But just because people aren't... 70% of men are not in a relationship and 60% um, you know, like that are single or not in relationships, unmarried people. That's what he was saying, right? That's a major part of the population that's within marriageable age, right? But I mean, this is a part of the of the transhumanism, and you know, robotics and everything, technology, video games is a big part of this. I used to play video games when I was like, you know, fourteen, fifteen years old. But it's fifteen when I discover, you know, uh, girls. <laughs> Obviously, right? I was like, uh, you know, I like girls, so let me go outside and play and see if I can find a couple of them. But that's new here, another. That's just my commentary. <laughs> in a relationship doesn't mean they don't want companionship, and that's where something like Gatebox comes in. As we seem to move further towards a shut-in and cut-off society, who no longer interacts face to face, a device like this may help lonely people who have no one to talk to. Japan's suicide rate is the sixth highest in the world 
and second worst among eight major industrialized nations. They're overpopulated and lonely. I hear most people there just look after themselves. If this helps people cope with their loneliness, then that's a good thing. Subscribe Plus now. I kind of want one myself, it looks cool. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see very interesting how the world has changed for us you know um and it's crazy because if you i'm not show you, i'm gonna show you guys the other that this one's gonna be crazy like you guys are gonna look at this and be like damn um i'm glad that if you have a partner right now i'm gonna tell you something right now if you have a partner boyfriend girlfriend fiance uh keep that person because they like you <laughs> because this is the future right here and and uh, I'm going to make a video about this, um, and I'm going to talk about some stuff about men today. But we're going to talk about the men because we talk about a lot, about the women a lot. But we got we got to put the pressure on the men too, right? And what's happening in America is not looking good. They say, I'm going to say it like this, I'm, I, I date our statistic. I'm going to say it like this, and uh, listen, hear me out, right? They say that 70% of white males are having a hard time in America when it comes to dating and relationships, 70% of the white male population. That's been going on for the past five years. That number probably increased now. There's a whole demographic called the menosphere. If you guys ever looked into it uh, on social, um, and at least on YouTube, right? It's spaces right here that they're talking about this stuff. I don't agree with those dudes because a lot of them, a lot of these uh, uh, YouTube influencers are losers because they're, uh, there's misogyny in their, in their message. And, you know, obviously I don't agree with that stuff. But um, that's what's happening in America. Now, let me play the other one. This one right here, guys, if you have, like I said, is, uh, if there's kids in the room, make sure they're not watching this. But this is in China. They have a whole industry, guys, of this. And they've been having this, I think, for the, I don't know how long, maybe the last 15 years. And it's get, these are expensive. They have from these type of dolls from $500, they can go up to $15,000, dollars $30,000, depending on your um. <clears throat> Your preference, right? <laughs> Can you imagine? And in China, I believe there's 23 million single men, right? Transhumanism again has to do with technology, video games, computing, and everything else that you can put in there, right? This is this is where the world is leading to right now. And we're not starting. This started about 40 years ago with Nintendo, with the Sega Genesis, like I said. I can I can't play video games anymore, guys. Like doesn't keep my attention. If you're a man, you're handling your business, you got a family, you got kids, and you're taking care of stuff, and you want to go out and play video games for 48 hours, I think you earned that. I think I think you're good. You're not gonna get judgment from me. But for the men who are not developed, the men who are not uh, dominating, the men who are not you know evolving, and you're still sitting down and you don't even have a a girlfriend. We have a problem. We got to talk, right? Because we need families. We need this, guys. And especially in this time where uh, the family unit is being split apart and they're using the window of overtone, what I, transhumanism, the window of overtone, uh, to split the family unit apart. We see it everywhere with, with uh, trans genderism not transhumanism but transgenderism which is where this is transgenderism is the door they're trying to use because they're basically um this is a, this is a political issue i guess i can say it like that but their uh, men and women are cutting off or attaching to themselves stuff right so this started i mean uh, transgenderism started in the 80s look at how advanced it is today with medicine but i'm not going to get into that subject today. but let's watch this one right here but this just watch this. This is to me. This is funny, but it's also sad, uh, and pathetic at the same time. But I'm not gonna judge people for it. But just look at it. Check this stuff out, guys. Is that this is a full industry? Can you imagine that? Man, look, look at this stuff right here. I mean, I'm afraid for humanity with this because the males who can't get a woman, this is what they're resorting to. Like, I mean, we weren't designed to look, look at this. this. This are some of these are very expensive and you can look, look at what they're doing there. You can actually design what you want. In other words, does that make sense? Look at this, it's the full industry of this. 
And this is, this, I, I think, look, I'm going to say something right now. I'm going to stop this for a second, okay? Because ideas are coming through my head right now. I would never agree with paying for sex. I would never agree with that. I would never agree with uh, the selling of sex, obviously. But can you imagine where you would spend thousands of dollars, right, to want to have, it's like you stop becoming a human being at this point. I mean, how do you explain this? How do, how do we sit here and make logic of this, right? And this is the part where transhumanism is now, right? And this is where a man would sit there and even deal with something like this. I mean, I'm, I'm, not sure, I'm, I'm assuming one of this is anywhere between three to $5,000 for something like this. You know what I'm saying? I think, look, I think it's pathetic and I think it's very disgusting and sad at the same time. You know what I mean? But this is what some men in certain countries are resorting to. And because it's, it's, it's a different world, but at the same time, technology is blocking people from being able to socialize. And that's what, on the, on the other uh, video we saw earlier, the guy said that people don't want, don't, don't want to socialize, don't want to go to the bars. I'm not telling you to go to a bar or go to a club to try to find a woman. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that there's other places where you can find women in the sense that, is is getting to this? This is this. I think this is about three years old. I mean, and they're actually making them or they're actually doing AI. I didn't pull up the other videos. Um, I didn't get a chance. But let's keep watching this. It's just. Look at that! It's taken away from the. <laughs> a lot of college f uh, funds are not going to be uh, funded right now in the strip club because of this. Imagine. I mean, it's like, and there's money in this. I mean, can you imagine how much it costs to make one of these? I want to say $200, right? Depending on the country that's being made in, mass productions, $200. They get four grand for one of these. How much is that set? I can't believe what that number was. This is transhumanism right here. Look at that. Different shapes, different colors. This is. I, I, let me see when this this actual. I, mean, I don't want to take away from the. Oh, this this video was from two years ago, so 2020. And can you imagine that in 2020, when this whole situation happened, in you know the pandemic, that people actually bought these. There was a surplus, most likely. This got expensive back then. I'm sure that the prices are not as high today because, you know, but can you imagine the men went out and bought these and this is, they're shipping this out all, all over the world. Look at that. This is what transhumanism is right here. The definition of when you start being human. I mean, look at that. They're actually going in there, attention to detail. All this has attention to detail. Like, they have a specific, and these are orders. You can tell these are all something that, and it's in Chinese, I guess, this language, right? And these are specific to the model. So people are paying this money for this. Uh, but if, also, if you look at also at the plastic itself, um, I guess there's a level of sensitivity the way this 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 plastic or rubber they're using for this, right? Because a man's actually gonna have a relationship with this. Obviously, look at what they're doing, right? I mean, if you have if you're not waking up to what's going on in the world around you, I'm gonna say this like this, guys. Okay, if you have children, I don't know what age, newborn up to. 
16, 17, this is the world they're stepping into. You understand what I'm saying? And they might even order one of these one day. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is this is a whole another world. I mean, they weren't making this 40 years ago, 20 years ago. I mean, maybe 20 years ago, yeah, but not 40 years ago. Anyway, I think we had enough for watching that. That's just... This is inhumane. What, what, I mean, cause, not because they're human. It's just the idea that a man will buy something like that. Um, I'm going to say some stuff. Can you imagine the world we're really stepping into right now? And, man, it's just... I watched a little bit of this video. I didn't see most of this. But um, just the idea that... Let me take the, let me take the image off of there because I don't want to look at it anymore. It's, it's, it's crazy, you know. So i got another video to show you guys. I might show you guys what Elon Musk is doing. This is what they're doing now. With the human brain the next one i'm gonna show you guys this one's um has to do with the human brain i don't know if you guys seen this but elon musk is one of the people who have said that this is making us bionic and it's true guys i have access to everything and anything on here right anything i want to know anything i want to research at any moment i have access to it right here but i'm gonna give you guys some yeah some uh, another video so you guys can look at it and uh you guys can see exactly what they're planning with this so this is basically going to be let me see that's that one let me go here let me see. So this is Elon Musk, and he's talking about the future and everything else that's going to happen. So, Between running the show at Tesla and sending his SpaceX rockets into outer space, it's surprising that Elon Musk still has time for his many ambitious side hustles. His latest bit on the side, Neuralink, has flown under the radar for the past few years. But it's now captivating the world's attention for a reason that's as intriguing as it is scary. Musk suggests that Neuralink will facilitate his mission to merge humans with artificial intelligence and subsequently save the human race from AI. Most of Musk's businesses run off the... Um, I didn't pull this video up. I'm probably going to pull it up in the next video. Um, talking about the scientists that we have, theoretical scientists uh, that do, you know, the, the advanced sciences that are talking about that we are in a simulation. I'm going to bring that one up with the subject of CERN. Um, so keep out looking out for, for that video. But scientists, I'm talking about uh, theoretical physicists, are saying that they have discovered that there's a major probability that we are in a simulation, another reality, that there's multiple um, dimensions within our reality, right? Now, this uh, transhumanism is merging with that subject of CERN. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, maybe that might be the next subject I'm going to get into after this one. I'm going to make two or three more videos on this. But watch that one too. This one is going to explain to you guys what the, he's talking about. What they're, what they're saying that they're going to do is that they're going to upload the human consciousness onto the human brain. And what they're trying to do is that they're cloning people right now. And this is something that's been going on since the 60s. I'm going to have to look for the information. I, have, I haven't seen it in a while, but I'm going to look into it. They're actually cloning human beings once they get older, like into their 60s or 70s. And they're putting, they're trying to upload their consciousness onto that brain. And this is the next thing, the next stage in human evolution. And this is part of what Elon Musk is about to talk. So I'll, I'll play this. The backbone of forward-thinking technology. But one piece of tech that Musk openly fears is AI. He firmly believes that artificial intelligence is the biggest threat to the human race, and that advancements in its technology is a dangerous game for us all to be playing. It sounds a little far-fetched to think that AI could literally wipe out life as we know it, but Musk isn't alone in his worries. In its current narrow form, AI can already outperform humans at literally any mental task, from solving equations to playing chess. But if we were to unleash its full potential and develop AI into a wide form of intelligence, it could and would outperform humans in every way imaginable, especially if we partner it up with robotics. Musk sees only one way of escaping the impending doom of an AI-facilitated human extinction, and that is to somehow merge our own intelligence with machine intelligence. Without realizing, we are all already somewhat merged with machine intelligence by merely owning a smartphone and having access to the internet. With the World Wide Web at our fingertips, we are countless times smarter than without. The only limitation that we have is speed. Searching for information using the internet is slow in the way that we have to find, read, and process before we can relay any information back out. All of this takes time. The goal of Neuralink is to make this connection between man and machine seamless. And the best way to do that is to physically merge the... We saw this back in 20... 2001. What movie? 
Movie trivia, guys. Movie trivia. What movie did we see this in? Anybody? Spider-Man. You guys remember that? I think it was the second movie, actually. Where the guy, the, the guy with the tentacles, right? He had a little thing on his on the back of his neck. And that thing short-circuited. And that's the why the guy went crazy. But this is, this is talking about that movie in science fiction. We're talking about it in... Actually, this was for... How long ago was this from? This one was from two years ago also. So that's 2020. Uh, but I saw, heard about this in 2018, I think. Um, I heard about this, what they were doing with this. So The two together using a microchip brain implant. So what exactly is this first-gen brain implant? Dubbed the N1, the very first Neuralink implant is a tiny 4 by 4 millimeter square chip that will be directly implanted into the brain. Attached to the chip are tiny wires that are 10 times thinner than a human hair, which coincidentally is about the same thickness as a neuron. The threads are embedded into essential parts of the brain, where they can decipher messages that are transmitted between neurons. The threads then relay that information back to the chip, where it records the impulses, evaluates the data, and then stimulates its own responses. The chip and wires not only read the information that the brain communicates, but also inputs information back into the brain as well. A single Neuralink chip will be able to connect and communicate with 1,000 different brain cells, and an individual will be able to house as many as 10 implants, totaling 10,000 connections. Testing so far of the N1 chip has been limited, but a restricted version with just 256 electrodes did see human patients controlling computer cursors, speech synthesizers, and robotic limbs with nothing but the power of their mind. Currently, the best FDA-approved brain implant has just 10 connections. So, with this in mind, it's clear that the potential of Neuralink's chip is pretty much unrivaled. You'd think that the installation of such a device would be really complicated, dangerous and invasive. But Musk has been very clear that the installation of Neuralink chips will be as straightforward as laser eye surgery. In the early stages, the installation of the chip will be done by the hand of a brain surgeon. But eventually, the entire procedure will be machine-operated. Neuralink are putting as much effort into the design and development of their robotic surgical device as the chips and wires themselves. Musk says that it will be able to undertake the procedure more intelligently and accurately than any human could, so it's the obvious route to go down. For the time being, the scope for Neuralink's technology will be to help those with physical and mental disabilities, used to help paraplegics with movement, amputees control artificial limbs, and those... Now, don't get me wrong, guys. When it comes to technology, it's helping out people. I'll be honest with you guys. I, I like technology. I really like technology. But I'm going to give you guys a little hint right now. I'm looking for this information. I'm trying to find it, and I'm going to find it. <laughs> I just got to dig a little bit. I heard about this a long time ago. This is all technology, just so you guys know, right? When we talk about cloning, cloning has been going on. I could track it as far back as the 1940s. Cloning. You guys know what cloning is, right? Is grabbing my DNA and creating a whole another animal. Another animal. <laughs> the animal that thought animal came. <laughs> Not an animal, guys. Uh, but, right, a whole another human. You know when they started to talk about cloning? Back in the mid-1980s. Yeah, they talked about that they cloned, I think it was in Switzerland, they cloned, I think, a cow, and I don't know what else they cloned back then. But um, they've been doing this for a while already. But this, okay, I'm going to say it like this, okay? And I, I think I've said this in one of the other videos before, is that from what I understood in 2009, we were about 500 years ahead in technology. Okay, I'm going to repeat this again. In the mid late 1980s, they gave us the internet. That internet that they gave us in the 1980s, late 1980s was actually around around the nine, about the mid 1920s. So, if we were about 60 years ahead in the 1980s in technology, how far ahead do you think we were in 2000, 2009, 2012? It's a good question, right? I've, I was estimating that we were about 500 years ahead. I believe that from that time till today, based on uh, the research that I've done, right now we're about 1,200 years ahead in technology. 1,200 years. That's the leap that we're going on. Because I'm going to explain to you guys like this real quick, okay? I can do lives from this phone. When I worked for t in 2006, we used to use GPRS, which it was like a 8 kilobytes of data. It was the size of a, the size of a, of a, of a image was like that corner right there. <laughs> it was pixelated. Now we can do full video conferencing from around the world. 
that's a major leap in technology, guys. Uh, I'm going to do an, a video also about the moon landings and what I discovered from that. There's a lot. There's so many subjects that I'm going to touch. The next one's probably going to go into some more of this, and I'm probably going to merge into, into CERN. You want to watch this one. This is a big subject. Um, very few people know about it. I talked to a few people recently, and I asked them, do they know about CERN and the Mandela effect? Look into that if you want to look at it, but if you want to wait till then, I'll explain it. Uh, and those two subjects I'm going to touch, but let me keep going with this. So I just wanted to explain those things to you guys, but check it out. With memory loss, reform connections. As the Neuralink N1 chip develops and gets smarter, though, the possibilities get far more interesting. I'm sure Mr. Musk is over the moon that his tech can and most likely will help those with... Oh, back to the advancements of technology, about the 1200 years in advance. They're doing things, guys, that they're not going to let us know. With that, there's, they say that there's about 45 levels of secrecy in, in, within the army and the government. I don't know if you guys know this, that there's 45 degrees uh, levels from top to bottom right, of secrecy. One being at the top and the lowest level of secrecy is, I think, is 45. I heard about this one back in, like, 2012. Do you know how far down that level of secrecy um, the, the president of the United States goes, goes, goes to? What he gets briefed on? Number 15, from what we understand. That means there's a whole other 30 levels of secrecy that the U.S. The US president does not know about, and he, they won't give him an access to it. Trump said that he was going to go into the op into office and he was going to make Congress and then give them access to the UFO information. Guess what happened? Shut his mouth. He said, you know what he did from there? Uh, Trump, he started the, the, what is it, the, the Space Force. You know, that's still, that's a government agency now, a Space Force, right? Still on. They haven't, they haven't discontinued it. Why? <laughs> he knows something. I'm assuming he knows, but they didn't give. They won't give him past the, uh, uh, level 15 as 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 as, low, as as far as he goes. Disabilities, but I think it's the more out there possibilities of merging humans with AI that really gets his juices flowing. In the distant or maybe not so distant future, Musk sees Neuralink's AI chips being installed along the same lines as plastic surgery, as in it will be an optional surgery that some people get done, but it won't be absolutely mandatory. Although he also says that if everybody around you has the brain power of a quantum computer, then you will probably be tempted to get the procedure done yourself, especially if you plan on competing for jobs and keeping up with conversations. The possibilities of Neuralink's AI implants are endless, and that's not a figure of speech. AI's knowledge literally has no end point because it's forever learning, working things out, and becoming better, all at a rate that we can't even comprehend. To paint a picture for you, with the help of Neuralink, you'll be able to do everything that your computer or smartphone can, but directly through thought. If you need to answer a question, your brain will just know it, because it has untapped access to the internet, just like how you currently have untapped access to your own knowledge. With Neuralink, you'll automatically know everything that you'd usually need to ask without even having to pop the question. Date, time, weather, geographical location, Brad Pitt's height in inches, anything. But Neuralink is not all about information. It's also about interaction and communication. Because the embedded AI can wirelessly transmit electrode signals, users will essentially be able to communicate with other computers and chip-wearing people with mind power alone. This communication will be almost instant, as it would have zero of the physical restraints that we currently have attached to speaking and typing. Think of it like pinging a thought into somebody else's Dropbox, but faster. Neuralink essentially turns you into a living, breathing Alexa that can control pretty much anything with an internet connection. Video games, drones, cars, all powered through thought. Musk's mission to merge humans with AI is a pretty crazy concept to wrap your head around, but the speed and direction that Neuralink is moving makes it one with genuine possibility. In the immediate future, the technology will most likely benefit the lives of countless people, but who knows how intelligent these chips will really get. I find it strange that Musk is fearful of a computer-based AI, but sees no problem with a human-based system. I can see hacking, bugs, and weaponization being a genuine issue of having a population of cyborgs. But hopefully, with the help of AI, we will be smart enough to figure all that out at a later date. The first human testing of the full-spec N1 Neuralink chip is planned for the end of 2020, so it might not be long until we see this technology really taking shape. How'd you guys like that, huh? <laughs> Well, here's the funny part, guys. This is already being done, guys. This is all marketing that Elon Musk is doing. Now, I'm going to contrast this with a, a, a verse of the Bible, okay? And I'm going to give you guys 
something. Give me a second, guys, before I do that. Let me let me get in here real quick. Um, I think my oh, I think my uh, my other camera died on me already. So let me um, let me move this over and let me but let me let me look for this for a second. Um, so I'm gonna contrast this for a second like this. Um, I'm going to show you guys something right now. So what it, cause I've been, you guys, you guys are going to have to go check out the, the rest of the other, uh, chat, um, videos that I made. I'm going to give you guys this right here. Oh, let me, let me make this smaller again. Let me get out of here for a second. My cat, my other camera died. <laughs> I didn't realize I was already here for over an hour. Um, I need to get a better battery. Look at what it says right here. Okay. Look at what this part right here is. So it says in this section right here, look at what it says. Now, I talked about this in one of the first videos that I did. Um, and that video was, I think, the second or third video when I was talking about the giants. Go look at those videos and you guys get, get more of an understanding. It says, as I was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. This is Matthew 24, verse 37, I believe. Yeah, 37. What is this? What people don't know about what happened in the time of Noah, it was transhumanism, but they were merging at the time. They were merging animals with humans. And they were getting into this part of transhumanism where they were starting to merge um, humans, animals, and uh, machine. You guys think it's impossible? No, that's what happened. That's what this verse is talking about right here. Right? So... Those those angels that were around back then, and this is what this whole series is about, is the, the alien disclosure, giants, and all that. Go look at the other four videos in there. This is the fifth one, right? The fifth video. So what was happening there is that these beings were around. Remember we talked about Enoch, and when he was 60 years old, 65, Enoch had a son in Methuselah, I think it was his name, right? Uh, so it says that uh, Enoch walked with God, and Enoch was no more. And it says that he lived 300 years from then on. So what happened within those 300 years? These angels, those fallen angels, came when he was about 300, when he was 65 years old. That's when those angels came. And they were here up until the time of Noah. What were those angels doing, those fallen angels at that time? They were doing all of this. That's the reason why we have pyramids around the world that we can't explain with technology that we can't explain. So the, uh, the, the last city of Atlantis, the, the mythology, right, is it real? It looks like there were civilizations here that had major technological advances. So what is it talking about in, in, in Matthew 24 that was happening in, in Genesis in Noah's time? It was some of this technology that they were doing. These angels have technology. That's why we see the whole UFO disclosure. This, all of this stuff goes around, guys. So it's not a coincidence that we've had all of this happen in the last 120 years. Uh, actually, 200 years advancements in technology. But if you look at... Um, I didn't even know they had electric cars in the in the like 1885. You know, do you guys know that they had electric cars back in 1885? But because of um, because of um, the oil and because of gas, you know, there's 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 natural resources. They went away from that because that would have given the, the world a lot better, po more power through um, uh, electricity, right? But they wanted to go to the side of um, of, of natural resources like the petrol, uh, petroleum, and you know, and, and gas and oil. And this is what the corporate greed did. Anyway, let me go back to that one. But imagine, and from let's even say from Jesus' time up to the 1800s, how slow technology took its time. But from the 1850s onward, this way, it's been like an explosion and just the leap of technology. It's not by accident. And, they ha and the governments of the world have had access to this for a very long time. Um, that's another video. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys more on that video. But this series right here, guys, this video turned out a lot better than I expected, actually. I was putting it together, you know. But I have some more videos coming up. Go look up the other four videos and what I talk about. And it's all going to merge together. The reason why I'm bringing this, this right here is because... If you could imagine that in the last, even the last 40 years, how much technology has advanced, right? 
And this is the reason why, because it's going to be like in a time of not, I'm not saying that they had the exact technology back in Noah's time that we have today, but because they're limiting the technology. Does that make sense? They're limiting the technology. Uh, the world is limiting it. Back then, it was, I, I can't imagine what they were doing back then. Anyway, guys, it's been a pleasure. I hope you guys enjoy this. Share, like, subscribe, uh, tell your peoples about it, and look into it. I'm going to make the other video. I'll let you guys know. I'm going to make a video. The next one we're going to make is going to be the, the Rapture. I believe it's part four for the Rapture. I think I'm one week behind on that one. This one's going to be good also. I'm showing what's going to happen and all the signs. I'm going to introduce the channel to the seven stages. Oh, the seven stages of the different scenes of, of the end time prophecies and every single scene that's going to happen. And one of them is this one, by the way, uh, the family unit. So look into that. Um, I'm going to do it either Wednesday or Saturday. I'm going to come live and I'm going to do that one. I'll let you guys know. Uh, I'll send you, uh, oh, you guys ask me for it or something. I'll give you guys the link, something. But um, that one, I'm going to put it together and I have some good information that's coming out about from the Middle East and Israel. Anyway, you guys, it's been a pleasure. It's been good. Like, share, subscribe, and let everybody know. Peace.